Welcome back guys to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial and in this video we are going to mine some stones. So we have a lot to cover so let's get on with it. The first thing what I will do is I will find my stone mesh. So I'm gonna use this one and we need to create a destructible mesh from this. Uh, there might be a thing that you don't have uh, this destructible mesh um, selection so what you can do is go to your project settings or wait no you need the plugins yes plugins and then just simply search for destruct and you have this apex destruction which you need to enable then uh, you need to restart the software unreal engine and then this um, create destructible mesh should appear so i'm gonna create this there we go here we have it and what I will do I will click the fracture mesh and now we can see how the mesh gets uh, destroyed and also I will change the damage threshold to let's say like 100,000 um, this is so that our mesh wouldn't get destroyed so easily um, yeah so this is basically the strength of the object and that's going to be it that, uh, that I'm gonna do here and now I will go to the world actors folder and I'm going to create a new destructible actor type blueprint class and I'm gonna call this stone actor and for the self I will again replicate movement and replicate the components uh, the actor I mean um, for the destructible component I will select our destructible mesh that we just made and also I will simulate physics for this one and just in case I will replicate the component itself as well. And in our class settings we need to add our interact and our take damage uh, interfaces. If you don't have these then watch my previous videos about the trees. Uh, we are creating these over there. And uh, yeah that's pretty much all for now. The next thing what I want to do is um, kind of simply copy from the tree so I will open the tree to save the time and I will just simply copy all of these nodes except for the overlap I will copy this into my stone blueprint like so and for the overlap I will select the destructible component make sure that my generate overlap events are set to true in the collision tab and here is our own component begin overlap event which now we can set over here so the execution goes to is valid other actor into this target and other actor into the hit an actor target there we go so now we are missing a couple of variables first one is health so we can right click this and create variable health and we need to replicate this and we also don't have this block collision and we can actually delete this and we can connect our destructible component and for this static mesh we can use our destructible component and for drop items we can promote this to a variable and I think this should do the trick and there we go and now we should probably go to our equipment items so we have our axe the, that is chopping down trees and also we have our pickaxe which I'm gonna use to uh, smash the rocks. So what I will do here is add a interface of a hit and actor interface. Then we are going to run our hit and actor event. And from this event we are going to interact message and we need a variable which is our item data of a s inventory structure type which needs to be instance editable and exposed on spawn and now we can set this over here and this should do the trick just like in our equipment x but we are going to do some more uh, we're going to do some more over here so let me see um, probably now we need to set this variable so we should go to our third person character blueprint and in our equip equip item event 
I will probably do a reroute from the um, custom event item data to our spawn actor from class nodes over here. So here it already appeared for me, this item data. If it does not appear for you, then just simply change this to something else and then change it back to the equip pickaxe. So the next thing would be, um, I want to create so that with the axe we can also chop down the um, the trees and the, the rocks and basically all the actors, but I want that with the axe you can do less damage to the rock and that with the pickaxe you can do less damage to uh, the tree. So what I will do is I will find my hit an actor interface, I believe. Let's see. So we have our tree oak and we have our yes hit an actor. So I will find this interface, hit an actor. And here we go. And what I will do is add another input, which is going to be a type. And this is going to be a string. There we go. And now in our tree, I will set the type. And in my case, I could just promote this to a variable and this could be a type. And I'm going to call this Let's call this wood since this is a wood and I'm going to do the same thing for the stone as well. Promote this to a variable which is a type variable and this is stone. There we go. I will set up everything in the equipment item. So what I will do actually is disconnect this. I will use this node, but a little bit differently. I'm going to do a switch on string. And I will add two parameters. The first one is the wood and the other one was stone. And let's see. So this is the equip axe. So I could break this inventory structure and I could make this structure. There we go. So let's connect these. I'm going to leave value for now. I'm going to show you what I will do with it. So over here now we are going to add a variable which is going to be the value and I will change this to a float type and we are going to set this variable. So we are setting it twice like so. And then we can proceed with this one like so. And basically what I will do is so this is the uh, equip axe. So if this is wood, then the value is going to be like it is. And this value will come from the variable regardless. And if this is a stone that we are hitting with the axe, then I will just simply divide float by float. And I will divide this so how many times I want the damage to be actually lower than it should be for a different type of weapon on a different type of material. So if I'm attacking with an axe and hitting a stone, I want this to be, let's say, like four times uh, less effective. So it should look something like this. And what we can do over here is actually we could just copy all of this to our pickup uh, pickaxe. Now we'll paste this in right here. Connect the inputs, connect this outputs, create a variable from this. And now since this is a pickaxe. I will do this the other way around. So I will divide for the wood and for the stone. This is just going in directly like so. Reconnect this. And there we go. So now if we would attack with a different type of weapon, we would do less damage. I will find my rock and I will copy the item data from my stone. So there it is, the item data. Copy and I will paste this in this stone actor drop item to get a stone being dropped. 
and let me see so this is the location and probably what I should do is spawn this a little bit higher maybe so just in case I will add a vector plus vector and I will make this like 40 pixels higher than the um, actor right now so the next thing what we should do is in our equip pickaxe we should select the static mesh component and we need to change the collision presets to overlap all and we need to generate overlap events so i guess the equipment items are all set up if not then we are going to come back to this but the next thing what I want to do is select our world actors tree and rock and over here where we are checking if this is equal to X I want to also add a pickaxe and I don't want the um, pickaxe I don't want the damage to be dealt from a bow or from a gun so I don't add these but if you have more weapons uh, that you want to have damage uh, to the structures then you can add them over here or if you want all of the, your um, weapons to deal damage then you can definitely just leave this part uh, totally out so I guess this is set up I will just copy this to our stone actor over here so we can remove this and place this instead connect the names connect this uh, in my case I think this is a super heavy object so I will disable the physics I think that this is a super heavy object and we shouldn't be able to uh, just move it around that easily so I will do this well of course if you set your health to be zero then it's probably getting destroyed with one hit <laughs> so but uh, other than that everything is working properly um, now let's add so that our destructible would actually be um, destroyed go to our third person character and let's find a free spot again to add again some custom events which I will do over here so custom event and this will be apply damage and this is going to be another custom event server apply damage the first one is ran on server and the other one is multicasted we need to pass through a variable uh, yeah variable parameter and this is going to be let's call this component and I guess the primitive component should do the trick so this is the component so let's apply damn it no we are running the event only so I guess we do need to change this to destructible component and then we can apply yes then we can apply a damage so make sure you do that Make sure you set this to be the destruct destructible component and we then need to server apply damage and this is the component and we need a hit location like so let's do it like this so we have that set up so this will be our hundred thousand this will be five we need another zero there we go and now in our stone actor we can simply run this from over here so apply damage function connect this connect this connect the location connect the component and everything should work pretty good now so guys that's going to be it for this video we have successfully created stones that are replicating properly and we can damage them and we can also drop some of them and there we go so this is what it's going to look like it's going to get destroyed and we are going to get some stones so yeah thanks guys for watching and see you guys in the next video